You, how carnivore was accepted by the metal crowd. Death metal didn't exist at the time. Carnivore's vocals were more brutal than anything else, metal-wise. Are we on right now? Yeah, we're on. We are definitely on. Are you sure? Because uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, uh, I just made a made a speech. You know, I told Bill I had shit really badly, and he goes, "No, it'll just take five minutes." He holds me here for twenty-five minutes, and now I can't go. Right. And he doesn't even have the fucking camera on. Right, Bill? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Who do you work for, CNN? <laughs> it's on value. <laughs> mm, that's it. All right, let's go. Take one. Do you want me to read the question Take again? one. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Take fucking 22. Go ahead. How carnivore was accepted by the metal <laughs> crowd. <laughs> Um, All right, I want to mention how intolerant the hardcore Listen, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Listen, with the fucking run-on sentences here. <laughs> how Carnival was accepted... Or not accepted by the metal scene and the hardcore metal scene. Metal hardcore? You were talking about how dirgy the first Carnival were. And go! I had a good lawyer. <laughs> Jacoby and Myers. All right? Don't, don't fuck with me, man. Around <laughs> Halloween. Anyway. How Carnival was accepted by metal people. Um, the first album we did, Carnival, how brilliant the title was for that. Um, it was slow and dirty. It was like somebody with osteoporosis, arthritis, hardening of the arteries, chronic constipation. That's somebody who would listen to the first Carnival album. However, the second album, Retaliation, was extremely influenced by uh, my discovery of hardcore music and CDGBs around that area in like 85, 86, which instantaneously I was attracted to. So when I strove, strided, strayed, strayed to do, was to create an album that uh, was like half Black Sabbath, the other half Agnostic Front, Chromax, Murphy's Law, Shia Terra, uh, Black Flag, stuff like that. Because I loved the heaviness, the slowness, the dirge of Sabbath. But at the same time, I go to CBGB's on Sunday, Sundays I should say, for the matinee. There was so much unbelievable energy in there, and it didn't even matter if the bands were not in tune. I mean, every band that I've been in has never been in tune. Oh, was it your mother? <laughs> oh, was it no, I do a take two. No, 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 no. Keep it rolling. Go ahead, go ahead. So listen now. He takes three hours to come to my fucking house for an interview and doesn't have the sense to turn off his cell phone. Eh? How much you pay for this DVD? Get your money back. Get your money back. Where was I? Hey, Pocahontas, let's go. <laughs> the uh, CBGB's Sundays. It's brilliant, I mean, uh, a little tiny place. I mean, like, you had to actually walk through the entire crowd just to go to the bathroom. So, me being a lazy Polak, and I can say that because I'm Polish, I take my dick out and piss on people as I walk through, and then I would fall down and twitch and faint like I couldn't make it. So everybody felt sorry for me because I feel sorry for myself. Plan this, you fucking prick. <laughs> no, no. Don't shut this fucking... Look at this. <laughs> hey, it's PCA.
I'm just hanging out down in Bay Ridge. Uh, I wanted to see what you were doing. So, uh, just give me a little callback. Uh, um, we'll be hanging out for a while. So, if you want to hang out or whatever, uh, it's cool. So, just give me a call back. That's uh, King James, by the way. Uh, 347 495 6252. I'll put it in the back. So, now you know why the guy made fun of you from Diamond Negative. The new album that will surely use upon you on Fox 5. That fucking guy, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut his fucking throat out and put my fucking carburetor in his, in his fucking neck. Skank that he is. What was the question, man? You're disturbing me. You're talking about your drummer. Uh, Drugs? Wait, what? Drummer being a hardcore drummer, not a metal drummer. I didn't say that. No, that was that was the interview you lost, wasn't it? Huh? <laughs> Fucking Buffalo Bill shit, right? Ah, uh, now he's mad at me. Four twenty-five an hour again. What? Louie from Carnival? Yeah. See, look, you hear what's going on here? <laughs> See, he thinks he's... Uh, look, I'm, I'm looking at you in the fucking camera. He thinks he's powerful because he just liked his voice but <laughs> and making comments and shit. His phone's ringing. He's walking around. He's taking food out of my refrigerator. He's stealing shit from my drawers, like old underwear, panties. It's disgusting. It's disgraceful. Oh, so Louie... You hear? What the? You, and realize you're paying for this. Okay, you. You. You're paying for fucking this. Sucker! Hey, man. I'm doing it as a fucking favor, because you don't know who I know. All right? I'm doing it as a favor. L- listen to him with asthma over here. <laughs> what, you have a fucking hairball? Hippie. So, Louie. So, uh... It's like fucking King Kong Bundy over here. Yeah. Martin Luther King Kong. <laughs> anyway, all right, now he's he's a diabetic man. I just I just gave him like ten Hershey bars. So now he's he's twitching on my floor. He's making a mess, man, because he's he's like making all kinds of skid marks with his fucking. He's got these Doc Martens on. He really wears size like nine, but he bought size 15, so all the girls think his fucking dick is really big. You know, this is this is why you should not have bought this fucking DVD because this is not going to Okay. At, at the end of this, 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 I mean, look at my head, look at my dishes, man. My dishes. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna turn this camera around, and you're gonna see this this fucking this prick pulled a fucking forklift into my house, and the blades went through my bed. It's very uncomfortable. Who anyway, up? Getting back to Louis. Uh, between the first. Calling over our album in the second one. I spent a lot of time at CBGB's and uh, got to be very friendly with Roger from Agnostic Front and uh, the guys in Chromags and Murphy's Law and stuff like that. So AF was looking for a drama and they hired Louie. <clears throat> and that was probably the best education he got because that, that stuff is so fast and Louis played double bass and uh, AF had asked me to write a couple of songs for them so it was a great education so that's why if you're wondering probably not uh, retaliation is like a combination of uh, the monkeys meets village people two of my favorite bands I cannot compete. What about a uh, hardcore resenting metal? What about it? <laughs> Look at this, man. Look at this. 
you, he's, he's probably going to fucking cut this out, right? But, you know, I took a shower today. I haven't bathed in a month. I took a shower for fucking this. And this is what I get, all right? Because he just left the room. It's fucking reptilicus. Anyway, what was the question? The hardcore scene. Honey? Resenting metal sort of invading the Oh, you see, now he's mad at me. <laughs> you see what you heard? You see that? He goes, he, no. I'm gonna, he, I asked him and he went, oh, oh, my word. And he went like this. The hand on the boot. I dreaded that. I was expecting it, though. What's the question? You were talking before about hardcore people resenting metal, sort of an invasion of turf kind of a thing. Absolutely. And I'm guilty as well. After discovering hardcore, like I said, CBGB Sunday afternoons, a lot of what the hardcore slash punk crowd designated as bridge and tunnel kids, uh, I was one of them. When I was not a bridge and tunnel kid, I was like grandpa. You know, with like the flannel shirt and the suspenders and uh, the pants rolled up and combat boots. So I really owe them an apology because uh, it was a very special thing that they had there. And it was completely anti-rock, which of course makes it rock music that the audience became the focus of the attention. Not the three, four, five idiots on stage. And when I say idiots, I don't mean bands I've seen at CBGB's. I, I mean guys or girls who are on stage and think that they're the focus of attention. Uh, well, you know what? As a matter of fact, you know what? You are just the focus of a lawsuit. No response, no sense in your mind. Security. What do you got? <laughs> Fucking Hamlet? <laughs> uh, do you want to discuss. What is that? A Greek food menu? He, he's got it upside down. Do you want to discuss anything to do with uh, racism? Watch Seinfeld. Or, uh, <laughs> all right, come on. What? Uh, Anything to do with racism and metal? Uh, well, I don't like horse racing or car racing at all. Uh, maybe how journalists sensationalize the Nazi aspect or the racial aspect of supposed carnival lyrics like race war. Oh, here we go again, man. I told you not to touch upon this. Oh, well. Or it's like if you don't like it here, you could pack your shit and leave. Like, were you ever throw it in my face? <laughs> you know what? He can, you know, he can keep. You know, he's not going to keep the camera on, but I wish he would because I really got to pee. <laughs> then I got these gold stones lately, but they're like diamonds. I put they go tink, 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 on the fucking bowl. But I don't see them so good, so I got to stick my hand in there. Is this what you expected? No. Do, do you want me to skip over that question? Who cares? <laughs> All right, we're definitely taping. Yes. All right, uh, I'll do this one part at a time, not this multi-part thing. Thank you, Lazarus. Do you want to discuss anything to do with racism and metal? All I can say is um, there are people who say that politics should not be a part of music, but music is a form of expression. So whatever you want to say, if you want to doc document it sonically, then that's perfectly fine. If you're asking me about my experiences with racism, perhaps thou should clarify a thing. You know, what are you, uh, doing, what are you were, looking at? Were there journalists who uh, took carnivore lyrics a little too seriously, uh, who maybe didn't understand songs like Race War or uh, USA for USA? Well, I must back up and say that um, 
Karl Marx said, he was uh, Groucho Marx's cousin, he said, who controls the media controls the masses. But I like to say, who controls the media controls the asses. So, Carnivore, which I really wanted to make the, uh, at the time, uh, the quintessential rock band by attacking sociological existing values at the time. There's a lot of big words at once, right? Um, rock music in the past, when the country was very right, rock music has been left. Carnivore was just as a socio-political experiment right wing, because not only did we upset the parent and the child, but the embryo as well. And so I wrote songs like Jesus Hitler, which was in fact comparing Christianity with fascism. Well, you know, the cross is a cross, whether it's crooked or not. It's songs like God is Dead, um, Suck My Dick, which is really, really like funny now because I'm 41 and I'm impotent, so I will not even play this song live because it's impossible. Uh, World Wars 3 and 4, it's even the horrible things that I do, besides eating my twin brother. Uh, have you had enough? Uh, Did you hear that? <laughs> that that was a fart. Because he's he's wearing one of those depends. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about the brutality of the carnivore pits? Did you throw carnivore T-shirts into the crowd and tell people to kill for them? Uh, were carnivore pits metal pits or hardcore pits? You got these questions that I have like eighteen different parts. <laughs> And I'm bipolar, man. I'm like the ultimate like the superhero. I am bipolar there. So just give me a question. All right, I'll give you a question at a time. Uh, you want to talk about the brutality of the carnivore pits? Like, did you throw just a single shirt out to the crowd and tell people to kill for it? See, man, you put see you put that like in there, and there should be fucking quotation mark or a period before it or a mikvah. Did I, what, wait, did I throw a shirt into the crowd? And tell people to kill for it. You want to see people die for it. I think it was an ex-girlfriend. Don't put that. Did I throw a shirt into the crowd? Not as I remember. However, um, I've got a lot of stage fright. Believe it or not. And uh, it takes a lot of alcohol for me to get on stage. Rubbing alcohol is perfectly fine. Isopropyl, 91% solution. Uh, as far as throwing my shirt out, um, I think anyone who caught my shirt, because like I said before, I mean, I bathe once a month, they should be put to death. How are violence and carnivore related? Violence? Violence. Uh, well, I got a bass violin. I'm not behind you, he's afraid, look at him. Uh, you don't have to, I'm gonna turn the camera around. <laughs> then we're gonna see who to. Violence? Yeah, were violence and carnivore related, or is violence just a theme in carnivore? You wanna know the fucking truth, man? You're killing me. You're bugging me, man. You're bugging me now. Uh, all these bridge and tunnel kids searching for an identity and I simply loved the wasn't so much violence at hardcore shows it was the activity but at least at, at hardcore shows which I did not see at metal shows there was I guess I should say like a coat of armor like what's right, what's wrong. You know, you can do what, you're, what you want 
and no one assumes that you're out to hurt them. But I remember a long time ago playing in New Jersey with Carnivore, with Slayer, and it was like 85, 86, and there was this big fat fucking guy uh, running around and just plowing himself into people. And at that time, you know, all the guys just kind of fucking sit and died of it and just pounced on him. So, there is a somewhat ethical code which I do not blame the <clears throat> primordial hardcore bands. Like I said, Crow Mags, AF, Murphy's Law for being pissed off about metal kids, metal people, you know, coming across and pretty much like shitting on that territory. And all I can say is I'm sorry because I was one of them. How about, uh, you can tell me to turn the camera off at any time. Uh, sensationalism. Uh, do you want to talk about how you've been uh, misquoted, maybe maliciously or otherwise betrayed by the press? Well, the questions that Bill has been asking me, it, it is very hard just, just to give an answer without any kind of background. So when he's asked me about sensationalism, uh, even 1985, 1990, the typo, um, there was a certain amount of press that was involved. So even if there was negative press about a band, at least it was something that generated interest. What was the question? Uh, maybe you'd like to talk about how you were misrepresented by okay. journalists and... Sure. Um, it was intentional. <clears throat> Maybe sometimes you told a journalist to be felt trust, like something, and the person printed it okay. anyway. I will. I will get into that. As far as journalists go, um, my one great goal in life is to stab to death a journalist with a fucking blunt, big ballpoint pen. The pen is mightier than the sword. You know what? I got the pen for you. Because journalists, when, when I can confront them about what they've printed, they turn around and say to me, well, I was only doing my job. But you chose that job. It's not like you're on the fucking uh, glacial steppies of Russia and you're hunting fucking bison and like yeah I'm just doing my fucking job no this was your fucking choice and I have been misquoted very much um, things that I had said and done uh, when I played with Carnivore and I challenge anyone who reads the lyrics that have been printed on Carnivore CDs, there is nothing racist or fascist or communist or anything else about it. God is Dead was a pro-God song, believe it or not. Jesus Hitler was equating fascism with Catholicism. So, uh, I didn't mind being a scapegoat at the time because it was very interesting how small-minded people are, especially left-leaning leaning people, who I feel are the 100,000 ants that attack an elephant and can take him down because there is power in numbers. However, your number's up.
Do you want to mention how Carnivore got signed? Uh, any interesting story to that? How Carnivore got signed? Um, <clears throat> I had a friend, Richard Termini, who bumped into somebody at CBGB's and mentioned to her, she's a manager of some sort, about this really horrible band, like these, these three fucking long-haired, fat, pimple-faced dickheads from Brooklyn. But see, I was much better than the other two guys because I have pimples on my ass too, but they don't. So that makes me superior. However, uh, to make a long story short, we signed a contract with, I believe it was called Road Racer, back in 84, 85 in Montreal. And so since that time, I have been signed to this label, and now it's 2003, so I've been on this label 19 years, sentenced 19 years, which is a lot longer than mass, mur mass murderers have to be in fucking jail for. But you know what? There's no such thing as a bad record contract if you sign it. If you sign the contract, it just means that you did not hire the correct lawyer to tell you that, you know, well, they want you to wear crotchless underwear during the whole fucking tour, and it has to be worn for a week by the guy who owns the record label. I'm like a right hand, a right foot. Can, can I spray it like with some kind of like deodorant or something? They're like, no. So later on, I will show you my underwear. Carnivore was dissatisfied with the record company. Why did Typo sign with the same company? <clears throat> As I was just saying, there is no such thing as a good or bad record company. There are, there are many, many young bands who will virtually sign their lives away to live their dream. I mean, my dream was to become a sanitation worker, which I was. However, I did these sanitation jobs within the New York City Department of Parks. And you know how, I mean, I felt like such a man when I was driving a big fucking truck. Like, people were terrified of me. And it was like, man, if I could get my dick hard, just, it's, it's like euphoric. It was like an extension of my uterus. I, I mean, my penis. I mean, Where were you? <laughs> see? You see this? See what I mean? <laughs> they licking me up. They licking me up. <coughs> Why would you sign the same deal? Or are all, all record deals bad? Or rape you in some way? See, man, multi questionitude. <laughs> this, this, uh, this hippie, man. You see? You're gonna, you, you're gonna buy the CD, eh? What? First question. Mow! Mow! Why did Carnivore sign to, I'm sorry, why did Typo sign the same uh, Okay, I will, carnivore? I will take the words out of your anus for you. No, I'm, I'm in your mouth, excuse me. Why? 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 That's what I said to her a million times, and she hung up on me, man. I know where she lives. Isn't, I found out she's your sister, is that right? The one with the four tits. And she has two little ones on the back that nobody knows about. <clears throat> I'm blowing this. I didn't see that, that question. I'm, like. I'm trying to blow this. <laughs> Why did Carnival sign? 
to Roadrunner or Road Racer when no, why the typo signs up the same way? Well, I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to say that when I signed with Carnivore to the label, um, the deal was, in fact, horrible. As a matter of fact, it was a conflict of interest because uh, I was young and ignorant and uncircumcised at the time. The record company recommended that we use their lawyer, which we did. So he's like, everything in here is cool. Of course it was cool. So my attitude was, well, I really don't want to be some fucking rock and roller because that was never my ambition in life. Like I said, it's time to take work on. So whether I fucking pick up garbage or write it, it's the same thing, ultimately. Anyway, after signing this contract, uh, it was like, was it 16, 1684 the year was? Oh no, 1984. Um, after Carnival broke up, which was like 86, 87, the other two guys, Louis and Mark, were released from the contract. And I was withheld. I like that term, withheld. I like the word Baba Ganush too. But withheld really makes me like feel like my balls are soaked in ice water. So now, when you know, I didn't even form type of a negative, and it's extremely ironic that a guy, Sal, typo is first for a while, took lessons off of Louis uh, in Carnivore, and Sal came over my house and I remember this distinctly because I just cut off all my fucking hair because I was going for a job to be a New York City police officer and then I realized man I have to lock up my whole fucking family and my friends so Sal came over he's like you know what are you doing I'm like, yeah, hanging out in bed in my underwear eating fucking pretzels and watching Seinfeld what the fuck are you doing He's like, you want to form a band? I'm like, hey, what's, what's in it for me? He goes, fame and misfortune. And right he was. So, to answer your question, Type O was actually signed before it was even formed. Because the other two guys, Mark and Louie from Carnival, were released from the contract, but I was not. And so, I was bound to it, and you have to get these other three fucking hippies together, and you know, collaborating, just like you're know, washing your fucking laundry in the toilet, that's how we sound, put out a demo, and shop it to other record companies, Radio Shack, we shopped it to, you know, Wallbounds, um, Sony, why not to do with us, come off of that. Saddam Hussein, we'd have mustaches. He fucking didn't even want to look at the press kit. Well, all right, I was, I was taken aback by that. So then the record label, what? Well, hey! This is what I get for being born. You know, i tell you something about my birth, right? I was 24 inches, 10 pounds, breech birth. I come out first with the fucking umbilical, umbilical, umbilical cord wrapped around my neck, right? So that explains a lot. 30 seconds later, the placenta comes out. The doctor goes, twins. See my face, man. So where were you? <laughs> By your carnivore uh, slash typo shackles to road racer. Or road All right, getting back to reality for a second. After carnivore, carnivore broke up, Sal indeed came to my house. Indeed, good word. I sound so English, except I have good teeth, though I can't be. 
Sal comes to my house, uh, I form a band, so I know Josh and Kenny for a long time, so we get together, blah, blah, blah. And so we do a demo tape over Josh's house, which is right down the block, and shop it to other labels. And Roadrunner gets word of this, and lets all these other, other labels know that, we, that I, the, the fucking condemned, have been signed, and that they should cease and desist, and resist, and exist, whatever the fuck, so. All these, like, I was supposed, I mean, we were supposed to get, like, $1,800 for the next album, something, and they blew it for us. Yeah, so. Hey. <laughs> hey, Odin, let's go. <coughs> sure. Alright. Uh, do you want to talk about the change in style from Carnivore? Sure, I do. Type of sure, in I a non accusatory tone. The change in style from Carnivore? To typo. Like, Whoa. a lot of people don't understand that. Carnivore was somewhat younger. This is... Carnivore was like 83, 87. So, I was in my early 20s. With the advent of, like, typo, I got osteoporosis, arthritis. See, I can't play so fast anymore. I mean, if I fall down on stage and I break my hip, <laughs> show's over, man. And I will sue the crowd. Oh, the change. Uh, L. Well, I guess as you grow older, you experience new things like herpes, AIDS, foot fungus, hemorrhoids. Fucking scalp disease, what is that thing? Endometriosis? No. Psychosis? What did, what did I get? What did I get? I got, I got some like, like if, okay, when I scratch my head, like cornflakes come off. What is that? I don't know, but it's like, if, if you ever paid for fucking cereal, cornflakes, five dollars a box? I'm gonna pay five dollars a box for something with a fucking cock on the fucking front of the box. Tony the Tiger. Get the fuck out of here. Suck my dick. <laughs> Frosted Flakes. Unless it's cocaine. Uh, I don't think we're gonna get into that. Frosted Flakes. Scabies, man. Oh, the heartbreak of psoriasis. Yes. Right? I was heartbroken. And also a house broken. Fucking <laughs> fucking Vanna White, let's go. <coughs> the wheel of misfortune here. Why'd you change? I did get off that so bad. Um, started to lift and. Oh no. Where's that thing? You don't have one of those things? No. Oh, Brandy, you can do a tick too. I got, I, got, I got false teeth. You could do like. As you get older, you think like you're more intelligent and you have to listen to more sophisticated music, you know, like with a melody, because like as Elvis Presley said, the kids like that beat. So, I started listening to um, more melodic stuff. 
that King Cole. Oh, Madonna. Man, you know how if, if you really want to be famous, the way to do it is if you fuck Madonna, you're famous. She wouldn't fuck me. She said that was not good enough. All right. <laughs> uh, you know, how about the metal lifestyle or the peak steel lifestyle? Does your music pay the bills? Is there a, is there such thing as a metal attitude? The mental? Metal. The metal attitude? Uh, well, I got a plate in my head, so I guess I qualify. Metal attitude? No. I was I, I I was never anti everything, you know. I, let's let's just put it this way: whatever it is, I'm against it. If you're like for this, I'm going to be against it, and that's called Groucho Marxism, because that's what Groucho said: whatever it is, we're against it. Metal lifestyle. I'm 41 years old. Metal lifestyle. Metal to me means like fucking silver and gold fucking implants on my teeth. That, that, that's the metal lifestyle. How about, do you have a desire to have a side project that's a bit more heavier than, or more uh, outright aggressive than typo? Absolutely. I mean, if I was allowed to, I would create music that would be completely unlistenable. Even I would not listen to it. I would I would have to offer a king's ransom just to have an engineer mix it because it would be so disgusting and it would like be against God. And it would be like a, a really rude like a doctor with a very cold finger examining your prostate. Do you want to talk about, uh, this will be, I guess, the final subject. Clears <clears throat> <clears throat> his throat. Making it in metal. Making it? Or, or well, not oh, making it. But oh, look, look at my, oh, I made it. <laughs> but, uh, he's pissing me off, man. You know, that's it. That's it. <laughs> But becoming popular, like you've become a target for lawsuits, is that something that happens to everybody? Target for a fucking law. I got, I got more dots in my fucking back when I walk out of the house than anything else. Target for lawsuits? I told you about that before. But you didn't tell the camera. Do you want to talk about being a target for lawsuits just because you appear to have riches beyond. Riches? Is it or riches, riches that can be thieved by or lawsuits? Dishes. <laughs> man, you know what? You keep the camera alive. It's gonna be like two gallons, I guarantee. I but call it, it. But for the documentary, like I guess, do you want to talk about uh, if you appear to be successful in? I, was, I wasn't kidding when I said I had to pee. <laughs> do you want to turn it off while you pee? I'll answer your fucking question. Man, what? What was that? Um, for who? What? The paparazzi? Appearing to be popular, not just in metal but any kind of music, does that attract people who like to? Uh, uh, make a living out of lawsuits. What do you think? A fucking cause. I mean, anybody thinks you have money or an STD, they're after you, man. One, two, three. Goes hand in hand. Or just a hand in dick, whatever the fuck you want to call it. That's all I have to say about lawsuits? The way I feel is... Maybe you should talk to my psychiatrist about how I feel. So I'm not sure. Anyway, you know, you keep the camera fucking well, but I really gotta be, man. Because I got stolen. It's like the Fugosi Emerald. I <laughs> There's gonna be a fucking clam coming out of my neck. This is not gonna be good. It's gonna be a breech birth. I need a midwife. <laughs> Lawsuits, what you have to say about them.
Hey Bill. Ja. Ik doe dit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Now I get my greens. Every red light, people are picking their nose. They got a fucking shovel, a rake. Me, two hands on the wheel. <laughs> Lawsuits. What about them? Does being in any kind of uh... you see the, the camera's not on him. When, whenever I ask him a question, he goes like this, <laughs> like like he's an ivory girl. <laughs> <laughs> what man? What? Does becoming uh, famous, even to a small degree, set you you up for uh, lawsuits? I mean, do you want to share any of the frivolous lawsuits? That you've had to settle, or maybe you don't want to talk about that because it'll give well, people ideas. I, I, I don't believe in sharing, but I, I will lie about everything I'm about to say. Uh, yeah, when people think you have money, you become a target. And I, six foot seven, 200, 260 pounds of low quality meat, yeah, well, I mean, even if you were fucking blind, you can get an arrow on me from like eight miles away. As far as the lawsuits are concerned, you see, this is, just becomes like socio-political, philosophical, anthropolitical, in fact. If you're going to sue somebody, you know what? You should pay for their fucking legal fees. Because I don't got no money, man. I spent it all on Rogaine. Look at my hair. See this? this isn't that a weave? All my money went for this. You, you know, I'll show you. You know, I know it's disgusting and horrible, and yes it is. It's like I have a bear cub here. See, you hear him? You hear this? This is, again, you know, all of you fucking people, I'm gonna sue you for fucking listening to this. Where was I? Losses. If you're gonna sue somebody, you should pay for their representation. Jacobian wires, lawyers, $400 an hour. For what? $400 an hour, you know what? I'll fuck it up. Kick the judge in the fucking jaw for 50 cents. I win. Do you promise to tell the whole truth, the whole truth? And yeah, fuck you with the Bible. Fuck you, yeah. As if I'm not going to lie in the stand. Uh, I'm sorry, because I'm on probation right now, so I got to be cool. Sorry, Judge. Judge Judy. Right? Judge Ratchet. What the fuck? These TV show judges. All right, man, I composed myself. He's freaking me out. He's looking at me. He, you can't see him. But he has one eye open and one eye closed. And he's alternating. I can't find I think he's going dee -dee 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 -dee. SOS. Is that right? Dee -dee 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 -dee. That's what he was doing. Ooh. Oh no, he was saying, I'm a mess. Losses. <laughs> Anybody who wants to sue me, you know what? I challenge you to a fucking fight to the death in my backyard. All right? Three minutes in the ring. Win it, take all. And that's what I think about lawsuits. You want to sue somebody? You want to go into a restaurant like McDonald's and it says, caution, coffee may be hot. Well, I've never had fucking cold coffee. So some old fucking skank drops a cup of fucking coffee on a fucking chooch. Fifty million dollars. If I only had a chooch, I wouldn't be doing this right now. I'd be an MTV, man. Look at me now, look at me now, look at where I am. Look at this. This is so train and sweet. But lawsuits again. You want to sue me, you know what? You fucking pay for my legal fees. You pay for the court fees because the public should not pay for your assistance in this 
l'égalitarien moderne, as the French say. Notice how the French always go, le pitiaire, pitiaire. But I'm like, what the f- hey man, what the fuck's wrong with your tongue? You're not going to hear this at all. It's the buffet. It's everywhere. This will probably be ended. <laughs> but, where's my point? If somebody sues you, you know what, this is, this is the thing, man, because everybody's looking at me. This fucking Buffalo Bill Bialza public, he left the fucking door open. Now I got a bunch of people in my house, I even know them. And they're eating my food, man. The White Castles. It's a tough time to live in. Live in. Mm-hmm. All right. Show's over. Ha <laughs>